here's another video that will illustrate the use of the bottom-up rules and strategies. I've got my argument set up on the side, and we start at the top and do everything we can. First line, the arrow is the main connective. If I had everything in front of it, then I could do arrow out, but I don't have it, and obviously I don't have the pieces to build this either. All right, uh, line two, also a conditional. If I had B, I could write tilde W. Well, I don't have B yet, but I get to line three and I see that's an ampersand. Well, clearly that's a good place to begin. I'm going to write kind of small because this is going to take some space. So B and R, I'll break it up. In fact, I'll bring in the justifications just a bit. No need to expand it quite as much as it is on the screen. All right, so I broke up the ampersand. Now I say if I had B, I could write tilde W by arrow out, so I shall. And that would be 2, 4, arrow out. Now, let me check off the lines I've worked on. 2, 4, and also 3. And a quick scan at the others. Can I do arrow out on line 1 yet? Well, I have an R, but I don't have tilde S arrow, S arrow T. I do have tilde W, but I'm missing that central piece, so I can't yet build the antecedent to do the arrow out on one. R and tilde W are both uninteresting. A tilde in front of a single letter, just as uninteresting as a single letter. Okay, well, looks like I'm stuck at the top. Time to go to the bottom. And what's the main connective? This is kind of an ugly formula. Sometimes people make careless mistakes with things like this, but notice if you connect the parentheses, you can see that this ampersand is outside the parentheses, so it's the main connective. Well, that tells me I should use the bottom-up strategy that I've called two lines for ampersand. This is a process that we go through because basically we're looking at this line and we're saying we have to prove two things, everything in front of the ampersand and everything after. Well, let's get started. I'm going to pencil one part into the middle. Because I know what this proof is going to look like, I'm going to cheat a little bit and put it a little lower than the middle. There we go. And tilde Z. Now notice it's very important that I get the parentheses right when I write this line. Cover up everything from the ampersand on. What's the main connective of what's in front? Well clearly of what's in front it's the tilde. So notice when I wrote it every one of these four parentheses is essential to show that that tilde is the main connective. Now down at the bottom I'm going to write the other part D arrow B. These two lines don't have line numbers or justifications because they don't exist yet. I have to prove them. Okay we have finished two lines for ampersand. How many boxes do you make for two lines for ampersand? Remember the correct answer to that is none. Two lines for ampersand is just breaking this up. Now, it's very likely that we'll make boxes for both of these parts in order to prove them, but that will be for the respective rules based on their main connectives. Okay, so we look at this one. What's the main connective? We already discussed that. It's a tilde. Which of these four wonderful things works with the tilde at the bottom? Obviously, tilde in. So, that's a box rule. Let's make a nice big box. Boxes should always occupy all the available space. So I write all of that. Get a nice, that's relatively square. Line seven is the first line. It's going to be a PA for tilde in. And what goes at the top of this box? Well, this is a longer formula, but the, if the tilde is the main connective, everything after it is P. This is just a long-winded tilde P. And so up at the top, I'm going to put tilde S arrow T ampersand tilde Z. Notice I dropped the outer set of parentheses because those parentheses were really just going with the tilde. So I've dropped the first tilde, but I needed to keep the second tilde as well as this last one because these tildes just apply to the chunks that they're in front of. 
Well, of course, I'm doing tilde n. Tilde n ends with a contradiction. Remember, the way this works, I'm trying to show that everything inside these parentheses is false. I'm going to pretend it's true, and I'll show you that if it was true, that would lead to a logical disaster, which is what a contradiction is. OK, well, we've set up our box. Now we're back up to the top looking for anything that we can do. And notice what we just wrote has an ampersand as its connective. And so the obvious thing to do is to break that up. Tilde, S -R -O -T. Notice you want to keep those parentheses because you want to show that the tilde is the main connective of what we just wrote. And then tilde Z. That will be 7 ampersand out done twice. All right, we could check off 7. Now, here's where I see people make mistakes. Oftentimes, they forget to go back and look at every single line. Can we work on line 1 yet? Well, notice we needed R and tilde S arrow T and tilde W. We pointed out that there's the R and there's the tilde W, and now the tilde S arrow T has shown up. And so on line 10, I'm going to need to build this. Because of the way the parentheses are set up, I have to build that chunk first and then add the tilde w. So on 10, I'm going to write r ampersand tilde s arrow t. What's the justification for that? Well, it's going to be 5 and 8 ampersand in. And now that I have that on line 11, I have to add the tilde w. So it's going to be all of what I just wrote. And it's appropriate to introduce some parentheses to combine the two things that are on line 10. So like that, ampersand tilde w. And of course, this is going to be 6 and 10 ampersand in. Well, I just did a couple ampersand ins. I know exactly why I did it. It's to set up the arrow out on line 1 so that on 12 I can get z by 111 arrow out. This is getting a little sloppy, but I hope you're following along. Now, notice I was looking for a contradiction on 12 and 9 the two halves of a contradiction have shown up. I've got z, I've got tilde z. All I have to do is put them together. z ampersand tilde z, just like that. That's number 13. And the justification, I just mentioned it. 9, 12, ampersand in. There we go. Success. This box shows that if this line at the top was true, that would lead to a disaster. Therefore, this line can't be true. And so on line 14, we say 7 through 13. 7 through 13. That's a 7. There we go. I'll put the, I think of that as a European 7 with the, the line across it. I don't know if that's true. Uh, tilde in. Boy, this is getting sloppy. Uh, 7 through 13, tilde in. We are halfway done. Success. Fortunately, that was the hard half. Where does our attention go now? To D arrow B. Its main connective is an arrow. Well, that tells us to do arrow in. So we'll make a box above this. And nice four-sided box occupies all the available space. D at the top, B at the bottom. And of course, this is line 15. It's arrow in, so it's a PA for arrow in. And now we just need to get to B. Well, this is one of these extremely easy boxes. B is already up here on line 4. We just need to have it show up down here. And that's exactly what repetition is useful for. So I'm going to say line 4, repetition. This box proves that D leads to B. So on 17, we will say 15 through 16 arrow in, and we're done with the proof. Now, we've talked about the fact that boxes like this always look a little suspicious. 
Did we really prove that D leads to B? Well, in terms of what the arrow actually means in logic, yes, we did. We could talk more theoretically about what's going on here, but we know that if the consequent of a conditional, in this case B, is true, then the whole conditional is true. Arrows in logic don't necessarily mean that there's a deep connection between the parts. All right, we are done. Let's call this line 18. And remember, when we were doing two lines for ampersand, we penciled in the two halves. They now have line numbers, 14 and 17. So that's all we have to do is cite those two line numbers, 14, 17. And of course, we're building an ampersand. So it's going to be ampersand in. And we are done. I hope you've enjoyed this proof. Good luck with the practice.